Cool, cool. Uh, thanks for coming on, Charles. No problem. I had nothing else to do. Um, just um, trying to, you know, put my name and stuff out there and everything else. I mean, heck, I just got into the video of the uh, week from Manic Expression, so I'm feeling good about oh, that. Sweet. Congratulations. Nice. Yay. Uh, uh, well, anyway, you know, I just recently saw the new Mission Possible movie, which is really good. I really enjoyed that. That was nice. Right. Yeah, right. Rogue Nation. Didn't see the, um, the Fantastic Four one yet. I might mm. see it next week. Our fan, uh, our fan four stick. I'm determined to like it just despite all those. All the haters. Don't be, don't be, don't be that person. Don't I be will. a troll. Don't be a troll. It's not being a troll to choose to like something. Like being a troll is rubbing their face. Yeah, but you know, I'm trying to look more personally. I'm because I heard some people like it's just average. It was not the worst thing in the world, but mm. I'll tell you this much: the the Rotten Tomatoes score is hard. To I was just, yeah. Worse than how it's done in Batman and Robin and bringing that out of the Sandler movie. It's just, it's not true. Batman and Robin is true. Well, it depends which Adam Sandler movie you're talking about. Because when we're talking about bad stuff, there's a lot of them. Yeah. Probably more than one of them. Uh, By the way, uh, Jada, sorry sorry that I have to remind you of this again, but uh, pick up the, the volume on your mic. Well, like we've often reminded you of that before. It's not like you're not a microphone person. My microphone problems. It is as high as it can possibly go, I'm telling you. Um, check, uh, did you check in Skype here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and our audio gets. <laughs> Mute. And there it goes. That's, the audio is gone. It's a good thing it's... that we get these things figured out and squared away before the show starts. Yes, because if I started the show, we would have these difficulties. I'd be like, stop it. Redo. I might actually, but you know, I've been hearing some good stuff about the GIF, though. I might have to just go and see that. Yeah, I heard the GIF, GIF? was really oh, good. Yeah. Either that or you can check Sorry. out Sean the Sheep, which is surprisingly universally acclaimed. It's a good what? movie. I, I didn't expect it to, like, Sean I've seen Sheep. people even comparing this to, like, Inside Out and stuff like that. It's crazy. What? Mm. Sean the Sheep. That's stop motion. It's made by the guys who did a Wallace and Garment, so I'm not yep. really, you know, surprised. Yeah. I watched some of the show, Sean the Sheep. It was on Teletoon. It was okay, I guess. It was about a bunch of farm animals doing stuff. Hiding from the farm dog because he was the stickler. <laughs> that old farm dog trying to keep the sheep from their shenanigans. Yeah, Bitzer. Good old Bitzer. There was one hen character. She was a bitch. By the way, like, do do anybody talk in the show? No, it's like a silent, not silent, but talkless. It's part. um. Okay, words. so it's exactly That's, like. Um, yeah, minic and stuff. I don't remember whether or not the farmer talks. I know he shows up on occasion. I don't remember whether or not he talks. Okay, so it's exactly like the movie. It's pretty much talkless. Does the farmer talk in the movie? No. No, but not even any of the humans talk. Like, the okay. most you'll hear is just like, ah, 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 ah. Like, they, they talk like Sims characters. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. I I still consider that one to be a rental. Sean the Sheep? Yeah. yeah. Like I mean, it it's a cute. shame it um um you know you know I just you know Sean the Sheep sometimes oh, you know God. it's um it sucks but you know I think a box office but I would not I would not be surprised that um 
uh, uh, DVD sales and you know stuff like um, you know Netflix some picks this up because I I just think that I think this is to me when I look at Shaun the Sheep I see like you know I don't know even though it's a kids movie um, even though those things make make I think it was released a little too late I think a lot of people I think if this was released. Um, I think if this was a released, um, the movie was released maybe a little bit later on, maybe in November and December. Wait, so was it released too early? Mm. Was it released too early or too late? Too I think, early. I think okay. it was released uh, way too early. Well, there's nothing Shaun the Street movie. So I guess that makes sense. <laughs> no, don't put it. Don't put it anywhere there. No, 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 no. Because Why? keep in mind. It's going to be, because keep in mind, it would be in major competition with films like Peanuts and The Good Dinosaur. Oh, no, oh. that's true. <sighs> Maybe a little yeah. earlier. Yeah, because that Good Dinosaur thing that we've seen no trailers for yet. Yeah, that's yeah. totally going to be the box office. There are some trailers. There, there are right? trailers for The Good Dinosaur now. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, no, maybe I should go back late. Um, maybe a February, a uh, March release then. Actually, I that no, no, no. Like, I think, like, a March release would have helped it a bit, but... Honestly, it's very common, actually, that stop-motion films, they would usually get low box office scores. Like, on average, they would make, like, a hundred million each. Well, sure, those things are really expensive. The stop-motion films? Actually, no. They're, they're usually cheaper than uh, computer-animated films. Because it requires a lot less animators to work on them. Mm. Yeah, but it requires a lot more equipment. At least according to the behind the scenes stuff I've seen. Yeah, but like, it's more no, but the budgets are usually cheaper. So that's why they can get away with like low box office scores. Yeah, well. Hmm. Yeah, either way, like we will, I think we're going to hear a lot more about Sean Sheep during award season. Yeah, yeah that's true. Maybe. And there's, like, that's... there's like five animated movies coming out this year, so. I wouldn't be surprised by that. Uh, well, we're we're at the tail end. Pretty much. There's, there's home. There's Inside Out. Mm-hmm. On the sheep. I haven't uh, seen Inside Out yet, though. And... What? Well, I would say it's good. It's good, but I've been busy. I just came back from family reunion. It was a great time, but. Nice. Yeah, I've been pretty. I'm I'm gonna see it probably when it hits on. Um, I don't know. It's gonna hit on Netflix or something. I'll probably see it then. Cause I don't like oh. to see movies way late in the theater. I'm like, okay, let me go and wait. No, I did see Fury Road, which was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, let's see what other things I saw. I saw Avengers: Age of Ultron. That was disappointing. Oh, this ain't. I thought it was disappointing, but still good. It's um, yeah. Cool. I'm honestly not really looking forward to any movies this year until Star Wars. I'm just waiting for that. I'm waiting for the Man from Uncle. That looks really good. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. That Guy works. Ritchie. Guy Ritchie, man, he knows how to direct movies. That yes. was um, American Ultra. That looks pretty good. Oh, that too. The reunion of Jesse Eisenberg and uh, Kristen Stewart. Yeah, they look like they play well off each other. They actually have good chemistry on film for once. Adventure Land was good too, back in the day, but I'm excited for that. So there's a lot of good films coming out this year and next year too. Great year. Yeah, I got but by the way, I you know, I'm he's supposedly doing actually, um he's gonna be Knights at a Round Table King Arthur next year. Mm-hmm. I heard about that. It is not the first time, um, you know, King uh, King Arthur has been made to a film. Was it that two thousand five movie? You think I look that up? Yes, I I was... know which one. I know which one you're talking. No, maybe not. No, no. I no. know. No, there's... it was two thousand and four actually. Ah, that's what it was. Russell Crowe. King uh, No, no, it was not that. It was Clive Owen, and um, Keir Knightley, and. Um, Ray Winstone. Music by him, and it did well. It made over $200 million. But it was 
32 percent not really you know the critics did not like it as much it was it was a lot darker and such i remember i was just bored by watching it i'm like yeah i didn't care for it that's what i did they tried to make it realistic but in the end they just missed the point yeah you're not supposed to be realistic well, there was also, um, well, there was Excalibur that was, like, a far better film. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember I, I had to research that movie, like, and watch it a lot of times because I was in a play with where I had to play Merlin. And I had to, like, and I had to emulate the performance. Behold the sword of power, Excalibur. <laughs> <laughs> nice brilliant brilliant I mean Excalibur great fan 80s fantasy film ever saw it the only King Arthur well, movie I saw the only King Arthur movie I saw was the Monty Python one <laughs> who has it yeah, who has it by the way I have uh, I That's did see it. Excalibur, like, actually, believe it or not, a couple, this was like a couple months ago. So, well, like, I, I, um. Sorry. No, no go ahead. Okay. I, I saw the Disney version, too, but that was like a million years ago. The Sword right. in the Stone? Oh, Sword in the Stone. Yeah. What, Which what I, I actually, you know, is really underrated classic. And even though some people didn't like it because, you know, Trovio Arthur had, um, you know, had some funny business with a squirrel or something. <laughs> oh, God, that scene. That's so true. My goodness, it's like reminding me of, like, it's like the squirrel version of Amy Rose from Sonic. Just teach, like, no, just, just get away. No, the one I remember, the, I remember more was the fat squirrel and Merlin. Yeah. Mm. That's a shame, you know. No, I actually, again, it's just, you know, it's from the old days of uh, Disney and such. You know, I always liked it when I watched it as a kid, you know. It's yeah. fun. I liked it okay. It wasn't my favorite Disney movie or my favorite funny Disney movie. No. But I liked it. It's okay. I'm surprised it never did a sequel. You know what? Then again, yeah. most of these things. Disney back in the day never had animated sequels. They just said the story begins, middle, and end. That was it. Uh, I think Walt Disney. On which, ones, which Disney sequels would be thought of as the most marketable? No, I hmm. think like Walt Disney was against like sequels in general. Back but in the then day. again, that was back in the day when sequels were frowned upon in uh, studios, right? I, I think they were. I believe that you're talking about when there were like a bunch of Disney sequels for every Disney movie. You're surprised that there wasn't a Sword in the stone. Yeah, That's but then again, this was uh, around. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Lee. I'm sorry. I, I was saying I, I'm not as surprised because it seemed like their strategy was attacking the more well-known ones, like either the classics or the really recent ones. Well, yeah, so I'm. Yeah, um, but um, the one thing I was like it was way back in the day, before the Godfather Part Two shattered that myth. No, studios did not like sequels for the most part. They said they weren't marketable. They didn't make any money. Most people did not want to see them. They said, nope, the beginning, middle, of the end, and that was it. Then it just, you know, Godfather Part Two happened, and a lot of people say, hey, they liked it. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, at least in American cinemas. Like, I, like, I thought about, like, when you when you also have like movie franchises like outside of the U.S. like Godzilla and stuff like that, where there would continuously be like more movies featuring Godzilla and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that's more like what you guys are saying is true, but probably more in terms of American cinema. Well, the good thing about the Sword and Stone is that it's getting a live action adaptation. Oh yeah. Start so getting that treatment. Um, then again, I, you know, I don't know if it's going to work, though. That's the thing. I can see there's a lot of silliness to the story, but I'm like, mm, can it work in live action? Where's Jason? There were a lot of, 
it's a lot of you know animation, a lot of things will, you know, that stuff doesn't come cheap. Right. I can imagine worst case scenario they'll just make like another uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice, in a sense. Which is not that bad. I, I saw that movie. I liked it. Oh, Nicholas Cage! Oh, I love you. <laughs> What? Yeah. what? Ghost Rider. Oh. <laughs> First or second? I did not. No, I didn't see the second one. Um, okay, good. I saw the second. It's, um, you know, eh, it's okay. Let's just say I it mean, broke down the it, door. <laughs> Screaming it. Scraping at the door. Scraping at the door. My dad but yeah, but then again, Elvis Alba. I really liked him, though, in the movie, though. really liked him. He was always this... Uh, I liked him as that drunk, crazy priest. <laughs> My dad saw Spirit of Vengeance. He said it was better than the first one. And almost good, but not really, like, good. And he said it had more crazy Nick Cage in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he yeah. was, like, half asleep most of the time. The only time he seemed like he was batshit crazy Nick Cage was when he was transformed into a doll head. Which, for the record, were the only times that Skullhead happened. Love when he like had the motorcycle and it like went on fire, and that one bit where he like drove down the building, and then when he hit the bottom of the building, it was like boom. It's a Mr. Skullhead show, starring Mr. Skullhead. See, Blue Rider pisses me off because it could have been a lot cooler than it was, but instead they made it lame and boring. <laughs> Uh, but then again, I hear stuff around that they might actually put some, you know, uh, old bonehead into the uh, Marvel MCU since they do have the rights. So I wouldn't be surprised he might be riding around in the. Uh, I don't think he's gonna be Nick Cage, but I think he might be another. Uh, I don't think he's gonna be Johnny Blaze. I think there's other people who's been the writer. I think there's actually one who is. Uh, I think. Uh, let me just check here. Good old Wikipedia. I can imagine, like, what they do it for, like, Civil War. Probably, yeah. Civil War. Good... Let's see. Oh, yep. Uh, there's actually two. Uh, it says he had Ella John, uh, the Nicaraguan woman, um, Eli, uh, Eli John, I can't pronounce her name. Um, she became um, Ghost Rider for a while. And I think the new one is Robbie Reyes, a... Um, I think he is um, uh, Latino, and he um, <laughs> uh, instead of a motorcycle, he has a uh, black muscle car of a Dodge Charger. Knowing I think that could work. Knowing Hollywood, they probably stick to the white guy. Mm, shame, because hey, you know what? You can easily just have Johnny Blaze like ride around, give you know something like that. Uh, it's like, you know, Nick Cage, you know, doing a hero sacrifice or something like that. Exactly. And, you know, someone like that. And um, coming back and give it to, say, Alejandra or um, Robbie Reynolds. Because right now he is, um, uh, he is the, now, the new writer. So I say, that's cool. So, hey, yeah, why not? And also, yeah, he was part. Of, and funny enough, he's actually been a part of the new Fantastic Four, the Defenders, New Avengers, and Dark Avengers in the comic books. So he's been around. I've never and, read any of the movies. I'm just going yeah. by what I know about the premise, and the premise is really freaking cool. Like he's this flaming skull-headed motorcycle rider working for the devil, but also a good guy somehow. I think it's cool. Fight demons. Yes. You know, also, you got, like, you know, freaking someone like Guillermo del Toro and made it like a Hellboy type thing where it was like creative and stuff with kind of a comedic edge but still dark stuff. It could have yeah. been a really decent movie. But yes. Instead, but, um, um, yeah. Be too safe. Yeah, yeah, but Guillermo del Toro, too, unfortunately. too underworld esque. What if we have a. What if we have a Dark Horse cinematic universe? Of course. Uh, stuff. Dang. By the way, Ghost Rider's powers, man, is a little much. <laughs> Dang. 
Damn. He's a, yeah, you, he's OP. Yes, do you see his powers? If you look at it, it's like, you know, he, he makes Superman like serious. People want to you know, say to talk crap about Superman, but geez, Ghost Rider. <laughs> Yeah, Not only uh, has um, Superman's strength, but he also has involved barriers to fire, the penance there, resurrection, immortality, re- regeneration, accelerated healing factor, and the ability to travel between interdimensional realms. Okay, no offense, yeah. but most of those just sound like the same thing over and over again. Like invulnerability, immortality, he can't get hurt. He's, yeah, he can resurrect himself. And let's see, I gotta look for this... Um, by the way, the penance there to me has always been the most interesting power. Is that he could just, you know, stare in someone's eyes and just say, all your sins, all the crazy stuff is just, you know, all the things you can do. It's just like, you know, all the worst things you've done, and no matter how powerful you are, it just, you know, can leave you boom. Yeah, he did that in the movie. Mm-hmm. Actually, Superman has one power that Ghost Rider doesn't. Right. The ability to suck your memories out with a kiss. Hmm. I think that Ghost Rider can't uh... fly. Well, he doesn't need to. He has a motorcycle. Oh, and he can ride it up and down buildings and go boom, and it's awesome. Let's God, I really, I really want a good Ghost Rider movie, you know? Yeah, by the way, though, I'm look at Superman. Eh, it's not... And again, you know, that's a fight I would like to see. Ghost Rider versus Superman. But then again, Ghost Rider only get, goes after people who are guilty, so... Yeah. Superman's too good. Well, well, so far, well, we might have an excuse that's on Superman and uh, Superman versus Batman. Mm-hmm. He's see, maybe his crime is that he's he looks himself too much as Jesus... Mm, but dang it, that's his entire character. You know, I think he looks upon us too much of a savior then, but I don't know. But again, these two guys are going to team up for the Justice League, so there's not going to be anything. They're not going to kill each other, so that's the whole problem with these planned movies. You know, they're not going to, you know, I understand, you know, they're not going to kill them all. Well, I never at any point thought that they were going to kill off Batman and Superman. They don't have well, that kind of balls, even if they weren't planning a Justice League movie. Well, we know very well that Batman Batman is having another trilogy with Ben Affleck, so mm-hmm. he, he has a good chance of winning. But then well, again, I, I heard Bat I heard the um oh sorry. Go ahead. I was just asking how often do superhero movies kill off their main characters? Like occasionally a side character, but never a main character. I heard, I, I heard maybe in Civil War they might, but I wouldn't be, you know, you know, with Captain America, you don't know, but yeah. Um, well, let's see what else. Oh, um, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I was gonna say, um, hmm, uh, the next, uh, not Superman, but um, dang it, ah, I forgot. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash. Yeah. Any of the Still DC? Works. Is it DC or Marvel? DC um, has um, no, Warner Brothers, all that stuff together. So yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh dear. I'll be back. I'm gonna go get seconds. Go all ahead. Right. We're just bullshitting. This- all right, just tell me when we're going to start, because I'm about to get something to drink right quick. Doesn't matter. You can go get it now. All right, I came. right back. I heard, Mike. See? <laughs> I got water and grapes. Good. You're prepared. Yeah, you're prepared. I'll be right back right after yep. this. Well, if everybody's taking a water break, then I'll take one, too. Hey, Mike, while we're alone together, who's going first? I I usually go chronological order by film, but this is a little different case, so... I'd like to request that it not be me. No. <laughs> yeah, First well. of all, I have a fun time to say, and I don't want to put everything in a mood, like, so early. No. Because we'll all be in a mood when I'm done. I think I'll uh, save it for the last, actually, for you. Because you can just end it all off, just like, boom. I'll have an ex- I have an excuse to... 
no excuse to fall asleep now. Great. <laughs> uh, so if that's the case, let's see. Jade's gonna be the last. Let's see, because we got 101 Dalmatians. We got Carrie. We've got Clash of Titans, RoboCop, and Scarface. Uh, I'm thinking I'm gonna try with M Matt with 101 Dalmatians. Uh, uh, James with Carrie. Uh, I, I don't know, maybe I'm trying to go chronological order, but Clash of Titans came on in the 80s, so I'm. What Nothing, we're just, I'm figuring out the order of the, uh, podcast. Um, I think I got it. I think I got it. You got it? Be prepared, because you're going first, Matt. What? <laughs> you're going to start it off. The original film is the earliest? Yep. Makes sense. It's not totally going in chronological order, though. Wait, are no. you going in the order of the remakes or the original movies? The, the original, but with you, it's a little different. Some kind of like half chronological, half my way. I need to know the last one's going to be the angriest. You know, worst case scenario, you can take a dice and like, well, let's see who goes first. You don't want to go first, do you, Matt? What? I don't know. Like, if, if Mike doesn't have a specific order, well, I'm going first. I'm just suggesting. And I'm back. <laughs> Alright. Thank God. You know what? Fine. I was. Where's my post its? Because I'm going to do the animation hat version. Oh, really? <laughs> Want me to advertise at the end? If you guys want, if you guys want to suggest who goes first, then write Mike an email. <laughs> I was thinking Mike about that. I was like, <laughs> I was just thinking about that. I had this whole thing in my head. It's like, if you want to suggest who wants to go first or next in the podcast, email me. Oh, that's so fucking funny. You know what? I'm gonna get some of the drinks. So maybe my fruity alcoholic drinks. Oh, you guys, come prepared! Why am I the only professional here, man? Well, you know, this is my first day. Can't blame me. Your first, yeah, it's his first I day on the job. You just watch me. I can blame, like, freaking the man next door if I try hard enough. I'm good at it. <laughs> mm. Don't test me. Test what? Sheesh, Matt, you want me to just explain everything to you? I'm working <laughs> at a fast pace. I'm going through it. If you can't keep up, then you just gotta be the high and dry. Because I am not here. Take bus stop breaks or whatever the fuck I'm Go mean. by Rotten Tomato score, actually, for the remake. Turns out how bad it is. Uh, I usually go on uh, Metacritic, but smart. you know. I am not surprised. <laughs> uh, no, I understand. Metacritic is probably one of, probably the most reliable of them all. But I take I take either I would take either uh, let's see I would take either uh, Metacritic or Rotten Tomatoes. Like mm. Rotten Tomatoes, I just look at the like there's like oh, right wow. under the percentage. There's like a small like what would be the average score. Yeah, I mean, the next, the next topic is going to be, you know, films that are 0% on Rotten Tomatoes, and yeah. people can pick movies that are, like, deserving of the 0%, and they can say why it's bad, or they can just be like, hey, this is a good movie, why is that 0% and then defend it or something? That's what I was thinking for the next episode. Oh, oh, um, oh by the way, um, I found another th wrestling preview that I might actually, um... I might actually uh, take a look into. A lot of people are talking about um, triple, uh, triple A, triple media, 
And a lot of them are not looking at it as a very positive thing. I might actually try to take a look at it. And, um, <laughs> oh boy, some of these reactions are, well, you know, you know, it says that production values were crappy. There's a lot of audio problems, camera shaking, and cutting the pay per view in the final part of the event. So before the event over, the pay per view just ends. Before the entire event, like, you know. Yeah. You pulled off like a Sopranos thing. No, no, not like that. It was like, <laughs> no, no. Could you imagine? It was not like that because it was actually something that happened previously. An old company from WCW. They actually had something final part of a pay per view, and then they kept going, and then they, they just ran out of time. They just like you know, and it just like this pay per view just cut off, and it just like okay, um, yeah, uh, we just cut off the show before we you know they didn't have any good time management. <laughs> yeah. Eesh. And on top of that, the matches were completely horrible too. So. Something I have to, might have to take a look into when the DVD comes out. Oh, I'll just get the unedited version somewhere online. So, you know, I'll get like something like that maybe around November or December. Yeah. yeah it's worth a shot. Yeah. That's what I'm going to probably do because a lot of people were pretty like hyped this thing up. And it just really disappointed everybody. What did I. Come in on here. He's talking about wrestling as usual. Okay. Yeah, that's my, that's my other thing, you know. That and video games, which you know, my no video game review just got on Man Expression again. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I. You didn't I sh- respond to my message over Xbox earlier. I'm disappointed. I'm sorry, man. I was busy. <laughs> I, was, I was busy playing um, some uh, games and such. You know, Deadpool. Actually playing Deadpool, so it's too busy. By the way, since your thing is actually wrestling and stuff, um, I should probably introduce. You might know them, but I might introduce you to a few friends of mine, um, Matty J and TWK. Oh, I already know those guys. Oh, you already know them? Oh, okay, good. Never mind. Yeah, in fact, I did a crossover review with TWK last year at WrestleMania. Ah, WrestleMania oh, Thirty. Okay. Oh, okay. If you want a link? Cool. I will show you if you really want to. But you know, <laughs> I might have seen uh, it. Mm. Yeah, but um, yeah, it was uh, pretty fun. But yeah, triple uh, yeah, triple mania. I am gonna probably take a look at it because a lot of people are saying uh, it is just probably one of the worst uh, things. Some people are saying it's probably the worst thing ever. <laughs> oh yeah, gotta take a look at those worst things ever, right? Well, something. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I just did a whole three. I just did three paper, a three video game positive thing, and the next mm. one. I mean, you know, I, I did some positive videos, you know, stuff like that. So I need to balance it out. Yeah. Can, yeah. I, just, can I just say, your headphones are super fancy. Mine. Yeah, look at them. They're glowing. They're like all techy with like the. Red yeah, light. I got these uh, on Amazon. Um, uh, Prime, gamer. I think deal. Special deal gaming. actually. No, it's not gaming. Uh, no, no, yeah, yeah, it is, but I don't use it for gaming. Um, just uh, something I use for you know uh, my only the only thing I use it for is just Skype, and recording my podcast, and pretty much there just recording dialogue. I really want to get one of those Blue Yeti mics. Eventually. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I've been beauty. using that for a long time. They're a piece of beauty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, James has one. They're great. Oh yeah. I can vouch for it, but they're a hundred bucks. I think they've gone up. Like they're two hundred for the regular ones. Two hundred? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> like. Blue Yeti has gone like so popular to the point like they have to put it up in value. Huh. Usually after a period of time they they put them down in value. Oh no no no. Maybe. No, no, no. <laughs> I have no idea what kind of headset this is. It says Sennheiser on it. And that's a good sign. Mm-hmm. Oh, it is. Okay, good. I didn't I'm buy only. Them, I... 
I'm that only means using it has a microphone on it. I'm using like the microphone on my headphones, Soul Republic, but I have a Blue Yeti. I've been using my video. I've been using it for my videos for years, and it's like it sounds so beautiful. Oh, are you ready for a bucket, people? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Oh, I'm All ready, right. man. All right. I just want to make sure something. <laughs> I right, so, just want to check something right quick. But anyway, I'm ready to go. So, hour and 15 minutes or hour and 30 minutes? <laughs> Maybe I do an hour and 30 and see how long it takes. So, hmm. just a heads up. The order is, I figured it out, it's kind of by Rotten Tomato scores of the remake. So, I'll go first. Charles goes next after me, then James, then Matt, and then Jada. Really? Cool. Oh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So Clash of the Titans has a higher Rotten Tomatoes score? No, no, it's the lowest. I no, think. it's the lowest for the remake. Okay, okay. okay. No, wait a minute, I'm... so... 101 Dalmatians has a lower score than Carrie? And yeah. The Robocop. <laughs> Thirty-eight percent. Thirty-eight percent. Forty-nine. It's fifty. It's it's uh. Robocop's like forty-nine, and Carrie's forty-eight, and uh, Matt's thirty-eight, and mine. My choice is Certified Fresh. It's not a crappy remake. Ooh. Whoa, going all fancy with your certification of freshness. Yes. I think I talk about a good remake and then lead into bad ones. Okay. By the way, uh, Matt? Yeah. Blue Yeti microphones, $130. Well, where are you looking at? Amazon. Amazon. Oh. Amazonian. Is always well, that was, well, okay. I was wrong. I'll admit. What the hell? I think we were both wrong to a degree. Maybe I got mine. I, I got mine at a discount at the Radio Shack. So. The important thing. Well, I got mine a long time ago. So. Jada, All right. What was that? I got mine like years ago. So like I got it for a hundred bucks, but like. Well, um, over at eBay you can find it for. Um, there's one for eighty nine dollars. Ooh, one with fifty three bucks. Probably used. Yeah. yeah. Alright, let's let's get this podcast started, right? Yes. Hey, by the way, mine starts. is twenty nine percent, so you know. Yeah. I have no clue what mine's percent, but it's too high. I I will I will let you guys know. I have all my sources on my phone. I can tell you when we get to it. Negative one thousand percent. Gosh, that type. <laughs> oh, I actually like that. But anyway, go ahead. We'll let's get, get into this it. Thing start. All right, just give me a second. Okay. Get back to name is you just got here. You want to get off on a better foot than that. You have just activated the the condescending Jada look. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting discussion. Yes, I just right. activated Jada's trap card. This is going to be the best episode ever. I can tell already. <laughs> activated the fuck out of here card. <laughs> But we're saving that till the end. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be a glorious finale. Mm -hmm. That's why I planned that way. Uh, okay. All right, starting the timer. Hour thirty minutes. We give us enough time to talk about. Uh, by the way, we're just gonna talk about the original. Like, explain what the original is. And then kind of, like, compare to the re remake, like, tell me what's good or bad about it. Just basically keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Alright, let's go.